You know what's fun, Dan? Among the things Justin Fields did in the offseason was he set up an Instagram account for his dog, Uno, right? I mean, are you following Uno, the dog? I'm not. My, my Instagram yeah. uh, activity has been very low. Uh, and, and this is a new thing. Uno did not have an account before this year. Uno Fields. I think he has like six followers and four posts or something crazy. So it's a new thing. But if you want to know all that is QB1, Uno would be part of that. He would probably have some good insight from behind the scenes on what's happening at home. Right? So <laughs> he probably would. Just by the look in his eyes, we'd know what was going on. He's Dan Weederer. I'm Dion Miller. We are back to talk about QB1 heading into year two. I, I like the ownership he already is taking of being the offensive leader. I think we saw it in OTAs. We're going to see it from the start of camp. So we had to do something for Chicago Tribune, our, our, our regular fill in the blank segment with myself, Brad Biggs and Colleen Kane. Yeah. Um, what is the one thing that we think Justin Fields needs to show over the next six weeks to, you know, instill some confidence? My word, ownership. You just said it. I said ownership. I think that's the biggest thing that Justin needs to bring to the table in this next period. No matter how rocky the practices are, no matter how big the overreactions are to a rough day or the overreactions are to a, a, a sweet highlight reel throw that somehow winds up on the Bears Twitter feed, you know, oh, look at this amazing throw. Justin has to, to, to be locked in and he has to take ownership of the guys around him. He has yeah. to take ownership of the playbook they've handed him. He has to take ownership of that meeting room when he's with Luke Getze and Andrew Janoko and at times Matt Eberflus to be very open and honest with his feedback to what works for him and what doesn't work for him and how they can kind of tailor this thing as we get on this runway towards week one. It's going to be a major challenge. I mean, Justin Fields is entering a situation that you and I would both agree is less than ideal in year two with so many new faces around him, new coach, new coordinator, new offense, new quarterbacks coach, new offensive line, basically, new set of uh, wide receivers. It's basically you know, David Montgomery and Cole Komet and, and uh, Darnell Mooney, and then Justin's got nobody else that he has any continuity with. And right. so that ownership piece, I think, is going to be a bigger challenge. It's going to take longer than people on the outside want it to, but it's something that has to be established here in this next stretch if this team's going to have any hopes of instilling confidence in the outside world that Justin and this offense are on the right track. I want him to shine, do not get me wrong, but I also know that his weapons – around him, the skill positioned weapons around him may not be at his level, you know, yeah. and that's going to be interesting to see. I, I appreciate so much the off season work that he did with Mooney and he, he's done with Cole Komet to try to continue to build on their connection, knowing that that's what he has. I mean, how many times this off season have we said, no, oh, Darnell Mooney's not a number one. Well, guess what? Bears fans, he's your number one. So right. you better hope that the quarterback and him are as in sync as they possibly can be to the best of their abilities together to kind of move this offense forward. I Justin can shine, but he's got to make sure he's bringing everybody with him. Like if they're winning games for any reason, it needs to be because of the quarterback play or or have a big impact on it, right? I don't want to see a defensive win. I don't want to, I want to see that he can be the franchise quarterback he was drafted to be. And I'm hoping we see that early, even as camp gets going, that we, we see he's taken this step. We're going to need to see him shine in flashes, right? Yeah. It's going to have to show up periodically where you say, aha, yep, that's that's the Justin Fields that that is destined to be, at the minimum, a long-term starter for the yeah. Chicago Bears, right? To get a second contract, to be here for a period of time that makes people happy. I think the other part of this is making sure you're steady, right? And in between mm -hmm. those moments of shining, you don't have these big dips or these really rocky days. And if you do, you come back from them really quickly and, and with the same sort of moxie and, and confidence and yeah. composure that you're known for. And so that's going to be a big challenge in this camp for Justin to establish that steadiness as well, to show that that he's got ownership of what they're asking him to do, right? And, yeah. and that, that it's not overwhelming to him. And when uh, the Matty Refluce led defense throws some different wrinkles at him, that he can handle them and, and know what he's seeing and know where the ball needs to go. And, you know, we also talk about the way this offense is setting him up to get on the move a little more. He's yeah. got to show comfort, right, and rhythm with all those things that, that give you an indication that, okay, this guy is going to make people around him better. Yes. At some stage, that's what you need to do as a first-round quarterback that a team trades up to get. You, you, can't, you don't have the excuses of there aren't enough talented pieces around me. Well, you're the talented piece. You're the talented. You've got to make them talented. And we've seen Aaron Rodgers for a long, long time now take guys and make them into stars right? Because he puts mm -hmm. the ball where it needs to be. He knows their skill set. He knows their route running tendencies and it goes there. I'm not comparing Justin to Aaron Rodgers. Don't get that on a headline anytime soon. 
but it's that type of elevate the guys around you yeah. mentality and ability that the great ones have and that Justin's going to have to show quickly. Now, I, I will sit here and say that I feel like we are still getting to know Justin Fields. And I watched him at Ohio State. Obviously, I'm an, an unashamed Buckeye fan. I watched him at Ohio State, saw him, of course, last year. I think we're still getting to know who he is. But I think the desire is there, Dan. I think the desire to be great and elite is there. And I think that's half the battle, is the belief in himself that I can do this and the confidence that I can do this. And I think that that's there. And the willingness to do the work, the the, the things that stand out to me are, you know, not going out on Saturday nights and hanging out with his parents. And like his focus seems to be very much on, on improving on the field. Now, I don't know where modeling Walmart clothes comes into that. <laughs> but I know that that's where his focus seems to be is that he wants to he wants to be elite. He wants to be among the best. We've heard Darnell Mooney say that about him. Like that's the way he operates. He wants to be the absolute best. And and you can see Mooney's excitement in being involved in helping him get there. And and I hope that that's the way the entire offense responds, especially now that he comes in not looking over his shoulder or chasing a position. He comes in knowing that this is his spot. The want to has to be paired with work habits, right? Yeah. They have to be consistent and they can't waver. And when you're in this position as a starting quarterback in the NFL, it's very easy to be middle tier. To totally. be great, it takes a whole different level of, of almost obsession, right? And, and, and an ability to be kind of a competitive psychopath, right? And, 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 and want it so badly that you won't settle for anything less. The one thing that's not there for Justin Fields yet is the production, right? Seven touchdown passes, 12 turnovers last year, seven consecutive losing starts to end his rookie campaign. That's not gonna get it done, right? And people on the outside have to understand that that's reality from year one, right? Like we can't run from that. Justin hasn't proven that he's a, a high level difference maker in the NFL on a consistent basis. And he's gotta prove that now quickly, right? And, and, and in a way that, that you watch the stair steps being climbed until he's at a level where you say, oh, okay, that looks like a guy who could sign a second contract here. Oh, okay. Yeah. That looks like a guy who could make a Pro Bowl one day. Oh, okay. That looks like a guy who can take the Bears to the playoffs in gasp three consecutive years at some point, right? Like these these goals that need to be checked out the box eventually, but it's a long climb to get there. And it starts during this training camp. I, I did the math, Dan. I looked at the schedule. This is okay. your schedule. This is my schedule. This is Justin's schedule. It's the Bears schedule. 24 practices between now and week one. That's a lot of practices. It's and also it, not a lot of practices. Not a lot. Right? So there's a lot that needs to be crammed into those days. And that includes the family fest at Soldier Field and some other practices that are going to be lighter. So you better be ready to squeeze every last drop out of every one of these work sessions to be able to get your team ready to play when the lights go on in September. You don't think that our boy is motivated by Kyla Murray's contract? I would say yes. Knowing that the opportunity to make $300 million is probably going to be there if he is able to perform at the level he believes he can and the Bears need him to. And I think that has to be a motivating factor as well, don't you? Maybe you can stop modeling Walmart clothes. <laughs> well, I think certainly that's got to be in the back of your head is understanding yeah. where you can go, right? And, yeah. and, and what the elevator, uh, the, the, the floors that it can stop at if, if you're allowed to stay on the elevator for long enough. And so, but I, I think it also starts with this micro focus, right? And you right. can't be thinking about a contract extension two years up the road when you've got so much to cram into every meeting and every practice of the, of the session at camp. And so, listen, you and I both know that, that it, particularly with the assembly of this roster and what it looks like, Justin is going to be the guy with all eyes on him during yeah. this camp. Every single day, every single set of individual drills, every single set of seven on sevens, every single team drill, we are going to be watching and, and documenting and chronicling where he's at in his development. He's got to be ready for that. He's got to be ready to answer questions about that. He's got to be ready to, to get behind closed doors with his teammates and his coaches and make sure Absolutely. that that grind and that development is, is not just incremental, but on, on an upward tier. Totally. And I want to see that this relationship he has with Luke Getze is really is really like something we can tangibly see on the field when they're working together, that how they're in sync and they are um, and, and able to kind of build on what they've done in the off season and be excited about doing it. I think one of the nice things, I guess you call it a nice thing about no one expecting the Bears to do anything is that Justin can kind of develop under the radar. In our city, he will be under a microscope. Do not get me wrong. Yeah. But I think on the national stage, yep. the expectations are so low that he can kind of feel his way through and then be that spark that shines and shows the nation flashes of what he's able to do. And then hopefully they turn that corner. I I just hope that this that he can help this Bears team become a consistent winner that they've never been. Like they've this, never really been. This is where some of the disconnect is here with where the Bears are projected to finish and where people think Justin Fields is going to go. And right. it, there's no way that the Bears can finish four and thirteen and have Justin 
playing at the level they need him to be playing at. If yeah. Justin's playing at a level that is ascending and, and, and setting him up to be successful in year three, four, and five beyond, they better be winning more than four games. Your quarterback better be able to pull out games that are close in the fourth quarter and show that big play, big moment, big game hunger that you have. Four and 13 and Justin Fields ascending, they're not going, in my opinion, it's not going to happen, right? I, I see no scenario in which the Bears finish with four wins and people feel good about Justin in January. It just, it, it doesn't work that way in this. I, I don't know, Dan. I feel like they could, he could show that he is worth building around, even if no matter what the record is, he can show actual progress and show that he can be evaluated separate from the record. I truly believe that. I if don't disagree are, with that, but I think I, th I think the extremes of the record have to be much less than, than that. Like a 13 loss season, your quarterback is not showing you that he has star potential. He's just not. And, and, and it would be hard to convince me otherwise. I, you know, I, there, there's a lot that goes into this formula at this position in this league, and they're going to have to figure out a way to maximize it. But yeah, to your point, I, I mean, it, it, there's there's two different things we're judging here. It's the final right. record and Justin. Well, and part of me thinks, okay, well, let's say that they are three and whatever, and they, and they have a higher draft pick. Well, now they can, and they feel good about the development that Justin, that the, the move, the way he developed throughout the season. If they feel good about that and they only have three or four wins, I, I think they can get a higher draft pick and, and continue to build around him and then kind of, bring in more elite weapons for him that he can grow with. And there is, there can be a positive to that. I know it's hard to think that they would only win four games and he's playing the way that they want him to, but I don't know that he's going to be that elite without an offensive line that comes together in an incredible way without Darno Mooney staying completely healthy all season. Same with David Montgomery, like, and Cole Komet, like that, that the, the best the bears have offensively are going to stay healthy all season for him to have access to. And, and what if what if he gets injured? What if Fields? I mean, God right. forbid. But what if Fields get in gets injured? Right. And right. I don't even know who their backup quarterback is. It's Trevor Simeon <laughs> and then Nathan Peterman, right? And and so that that's just Simeon, right. so, heading into August. Right. So if that happens, and now and now we're only winning three or four games. Well, well, now you're not. You haven't even been able to judge Justin. God, please don't let that happen. But well, I'm just you, saying you, that. So you just hit on something that I think is very worrisome that people aren't talking about. I think there's a, yeah. a, a thought process within the fan base that come January. You're either going to know that Justin is a, a, a ascending star or you're going to know that he's not going to work out and right. you're going to have to go use that high draft pick that you talked about to maybe look at the quarterback market in the 2023 draft. Right. Here's the scenario I see unfolding. The Bears are uh, middle of the road to, to, to very below average. And Justin Fields is somewhere in the middle where, where you don't know. We get to the end of his second season just, under a new coordinator in a new offense and we say, I don't know. I don't know which one he is. And so then if you're Ryan Poles and, you're, and, and the whole front office regime, you have to make educated calculations and projections on what you've seen with your own eyes to figure out where this is headed. But I really do. I'm saying this on July 25th, 2022. You can bring this back to me in six months and say, Dan, you were right. Because that's what you usually say to me. That, <laughs> that, that Justin wound up in this, in this very, very, very gray area that leaves everyone uncomfortable not knowing whether right. he's on, on this this fast track upward or on this spiral down, it's just going to be one of these weird feelings where you go, I don't know, I don't really know, and it's a feeling the Bears fans should know very well, right? After after eight right. years of five hundred Jay Cutler, after you know four years of Mitch Trubisky going through the ladder, but I I really think that that's where this season is going to end up, where we don't know where Justin Fields' path is going to end. Oh, it just feels like a rerun of Mitch Trubisky. Let it not be so. Let it, it not be feel so. like that, but it, it's certainly a little bit more ambiguous than I think people on the outside think it's right. going to be. It does, though. It feels like I, I don't want to say they're trying to ask Justin to do things he can't do. I want them to really cater this offense to his skill strength. Yeah, and we'll see, and, and we'll see. All right, what happens? All right, all this talk. Now, I am, I am very glad that training camp is starting, so we can start to get some answers to these questions. Twenty-four practices, three preseason games before week one. I'll see you at most of those. So I know. Get, get ready for it. All right, can't wait to see you, Dan. Don't forget to like, subscribe. We'll have a lot more content as the preseason, training camp, and the regular season get into full gear. That's Bears Dion. I'm Dan. Thanks for joining us.